Here, following up on uh, the concept of Kepler's first law, is the eccentricity of a planet's orbit. And the eccentricity is kind of a measure of how elliptical it is. If the eccentricity is very small or zero, then it's circular or nearly circular. And if the eccentricity is a large number, then it's very elliptical. It's very, the orbit is very elongated. All right, the definition of eccentricity is C over A. Now remember that C was the distance from the, the central point of the orbit to where one of the foci is, in this case where the sun is, and A would be the semi-major axis. So that ratio would be the eccentricity of the orbit. But that's more for mathematics. For a practical sense, it's better to think about it where the Earth would be located at different points of the orbit. And so you can see that there's one point where the Earth, if this is the Earth right here, would be the closest to the sun, and then there would be a time when the Earth would be the farthest away from the sun. This point right here is called perihelion, and this point right here is called aphelion. So when the Earth is at perihelion, it's close to the Sun. When it's aphelion, it's farthest away from the Sun. So we can talk about the distance the Earth is from the Sun at those two points. And it turns out that for the, the perihelion, E sub P, uh, or actually that, not E, but I wanted to say R. So R sub P, the radius of the orbit, when it's close to the Sun, is equal to about 147 million 98,000 kilometers. And at half helion, R sub A, then the Earth is about 152,098,000 kilometers away from the Sun. And so another way in calculating the eccentricity is as follows. We could say that the eccentricity, and we use a small letter E for that, is equal to the difference between the two radii, R sub A minus R sub P, divided by uh, R sub A plus R sub P. So let's go ahead and plug in those numbers and see what we get for the eccentricity of the Earth's orbit. So for R sub A, uh, we get 152,098,000 kilometers minus 147,098,000 kilometers. And the whole thing divided by 152,098,000 kilometers plus 147,098,000 kilometers. All right, when we work this out, we should get the eccentricity of the Earth's orbit. Let's see what that is. So that's exactly 5,000. We take 5,000 divided by 152,098,000 plus 147,098,000. Close parentheses equals and we get 0 0.0167. <clears throat> All right, so that is the eccentricity of the Earth's orbit, 0 0.0167. Turns out that that eccentricity has a lot to do with the climate of the Earth because as the eccentricity becomes large, it receives a lot more or a lot less energy from the sun depending upon where it is. And that eccentricity can change quite a bit over the centuries and over the thousands of years. Anyway, continuing on, um, let's see if we can make a relationship between this value right here and this value right here. So, notice that R sub P plus R sub A is equal to twice A, right there. So what we can say here is that R sub P plus R sub A is equal to two times A. And, uh, if we now go ahead and look at this, we can see that R sub P is equal to A minus C. So R sub P is equal to A minus C. And we can see that R sub A is equal to A plus C. Okay, using that information, let's plug that in here. All right, so starting up again with that equation right there, we can say eccentricity is equal to R sub A minus R sub P divided by R sub A plus R sub P. And so R sub P is A minus C, R sub A is A plus C. So this is equal to A plus C minus R sub P, which is A minus C. Divide that by R sub A, which is A plus C, plus A minus C. So here we have A minus A that disappears, and C minus a minus C, that's C plus C. That means 2C divided by a plus A, which is 2A, and C minus C disappears. And so we can see that if the 2's cancel out, 
E is equal to C divided by A. So you do see that they are equal, those two equations, in a way, but this is definitely the most practical way of finding the eccentricity of the Earth or of any moon or any planet for that matter. Simply, the difference between the distance from the Sun or from the planet to the, uh, I'll take one at a time, from the distance from the Sun to the Earth, uh, when it's closest approach, this is from sun to the earth when it's farthest approach, plugging that in, or with moons and planets, it works exactly the same way to find the eccentricity of the orbits. And that's how you do that.